Good morning, everyone. My name is Gasoline The Sources. I am the president and wig maker of Threaded by Lavish, located in Cutler Bay, Florida, where I make you look and feel good. Hey, it's Kellen. And today on Diversified Game, I have somebody who's going to give you the game, not just on the beauty business, but she is a member of the Miami Dade Chamber. I kid you not, when I first got on, I said, Who is this person? They can't get her name right. Because every time you hear her, she comes with like an authority. Like, you know, she don't take no mess. Then I was got on a boat with her. And her family got sick as a dog. Um, you know, she I don't know if she was in the number laying beside me while we we're all sick, but she always looks like this. This is how she wakes up. Her and her sister are always active members everywhere, networking as a team. You gotta love the Haitian dream. Gasoline the sources. Welcome to Diversified Game. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. How are you? Blessed by the best over here. And guess Link is like the, I, I, when I first saw, I don't know if I said it, look at the young Mary J or, or who it was. Cause you guys, it's like every time you step out, it, it's lights, camera, action. Let's get into this beauty game. Is this something that was um, like a childhood dream or is this something you found out later in life that you wanted to do to make a profession? I believe it was a childhood dream. I believe it was a gift from God, honestly speaking. Since a little girl, it's been in me to like do people's hair. It started off with like myself, you know, um, the weekends would come. We stayed in the apartment and I would fill the tub up like it was a swimming pool. And right after I would wet my hair or whatever I have you, I would do my own hair. Of course, my mom would get, get upset, but what can she say? Eventually she allowed me to even do my sister's hair. I would do cousin's hair, like, you know, the edges be thin or whatever. Before you know it, their hair are growing. And it's just something I picked up over time. Um, even when it came to, like, going to school, picture day, for some reason, picture day was always an afternoon for me. So my hair would, like, wave up. So I would have to bring my curling iron, straightening, comb or whatever have you, and do it in the bathroom. And then I would do, you know, friend's hair before or after school. And it's just something that grew into me. I thought I wanted to be a teacher. And then I realized they don't get paid enough. And this is elementary, like five, six years old. And then from there, I was like, I want to be a pediatric RN. I started it, but I didn't complete it. By 2006, my dad was like, you know what? You need to go to school for this. This is something you seem to love to do. And we used to bicker all the time about him, you know, having me become a nurse. But I said, that's not what God had for me. It's not the vision. So I love what I do. Okay. And like all parents, they want to push you to whatever is the safe bet a lot of times. And right. especially immigrant parents, um, man, you better become a nurse. Um, you know, I'm, <laughs> that, that's, I'm married to medicine and all of her sisters are nurses or nurse practitioners. And it's like, you know, you, you, you better, but it's just funny how it, that came. When in the business, did you say, you know what? I need to go to the next level. And what I mean by that is not too many people in the beauty business. I've lived in like five or six different states, been active in chambers all across the country. You don't see a lot of people in the beauty business, especially black women who you can even drag to these things. Most people are intimidated. They're like, that's not for us. They're talking RFPs, not understanding that the government buys everything from the prisons to the schools. They buy beauty products if you want to go down that lane. But what got you to say, I'm going to be active because you are really dedicated to showing up and showing out. So in 2014, I knew my time was up. Um, I was working in a commercial building, which was known as like the indoor flea market down south in Cutler Bay, um, US One Discount Mall to be exact. I started there in 2000 um, after having my daughter. And a lady was like, come work with me or whatever. And I kept hesitating. Probably a month later, I decided, you know what? Let me take this venture. And that's when the actual like career started for me. But it didn't really become official until 2015, um, really 14. Um, I knew my time was up in the salon that I was in. 
Um, that was my third uh, salon um, working space. And I knew like the person I was working with, it, it was just like conflict, but it wasn't like a major type of conflict, but I knew God was like, it's time to elevate. So in 2015, because I did not move when God told me to, he made her tell me to move. So it was like on a Sunday, today's your last day. Okay, cool. No problem. So I called the manager immediately, which was trying to get me in a my own space from 2003. And at that time, I was like, Lord, it's time. And there was a space that I seen that I wanted. So I got I wound up getting that space. Um, and then that's when my venture, Lavish Touches Hair and Spa Inc. started. And the goal and vision was for my sister and my cousin, you know, from month to month, come in. And we do like a spa party, spa day type of thing and give back to my customers. I, I like giving back. And by 2020, when COVID hit, um, let, wait, let's go back. So 2016, 2017, I decided I want to start making wigs. And what I'm wearing today is the first one I actually hand stitched. Everybody wanted one. And at that time, I didn't know how to make them yet. <laughs> So by 2019, I started, you know, doing research, having sleepless night on YouTube and stuff of that nature, and finally found someone that I can learn from here in Miami. Amazing. And I wound up taking up to three classes by that time. But 2020, COVID happened. And, you know, you, you hear things about people doing inventories and stuff, but I never thought to apply it into my business. And... When COVID happened, it was a wake up call for me. Not only was it a wake up call, it was a blessing because although we were supposed to be um, closed, I still had people reaching out to me wanting their hair done. And I had an employee at the time. I said, pack your bags because people are going to be calling. And they did two weeks later. And so from there, um, I was in different Zooms. It was a lot of people offering free classes, um, giving guides about how you should properly you know, relaunch or restructure your business. And there's a lot of things that I did not implement. And I used to get emails from the chamber because I was, you know, um, part of Nana, um, the lady, Miss Marlene Lee. I met her through a mutual friend. And Miss Marlene would have me go to events and do like um, vendor pop-ups. And I would never, you know, walk up to these people. I met Mr. Matthew. I met Mr. Danilo from Strive 305. But I never connected with these people, not knowing they would have took me where I needed to back then. But luckily, thank God for COVID, um, I got the emails. And from there, every day I was on Zoom and listening to these things. I was missing out on opportunities. No money. I didn't get no PPP, no nothing. So that's when my hunger um, for knowledge into my business developed. And I was in every room. And that's why people see me in every room. And it's not about, you know, being known or anything. It's about me mastering that back office that Mr. Matthew always speaks about, which is a part of the chamber, the technical assistant part. And I love it because I check my emails regularly. So any classes, any events, whatever have you, I'm there. Now, can you tell the people, and it's a real lesson for those who are still, you know, they have the... They just started, got their first studio or they've been in that same small studio. They do good work. They want to expand. But how, um, talk about more about that back office. Because as a consultant, it's the biggest headache when you're trying to get your clients to understand CPA, solo 401k. Let's get an attorney just in case we know somebody in case something happens. So now that I got somebody in the beauty business, I'm going to use this clip all day when I'm trying to explain it to the people. Like It's not just me saying it because you're paying me. It's because this helps. So what about that back office? Go more in detail because a lot of entrepreneurs, when they start, don't think about that stuff. So with the back office, number one, you need to make sure your finances are in order. And the reason why you want it to be in order, there's grant opportunities every single day. If you look online, um, Access Health, um, Hello Alice, um, different um, grants.gov, et cetera, right? And then you got these loans. Eventually, you're going to want to apply for capital, which I didn't believe in because I used to think about loans are hindering to you 
but you don't realize that capital helps you build and grow and you need that for your business. Like they say, use other people's money. That's what you want to be able to do. So you want to make sure that your back office, which is your finances, are in order, in order for you to fulfill these grants, these goals, because they look at everything from your personal um, credit to your business credit. And you want to make sure everything aligns. You want to make sure that everything is going into one basket when it comes to your business. You want to have a business account in place, you know, so you can keep track of how much you're making. Um, Because it'd be like, how much you make a week? And I have to calculate from this set, this set, that set. No, why not have everything fall into one basket? And that's what I had to learn to do. I love it. I love it. And then talk about, you know, grant opportunities. A lot of folks, I was mentioning RFPs and government uh, contracting, but what about the, you know, getting grants as a beauty business? Is it because of the business you are in? Is it because of the region you're in? Is it just because you got the sauce and they want to, you know, show you love? Like what was been available for you? Well, when I started writing grants, for myself, trying to learn how to do these things, I would get denied. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? But it wasn't until the technical part with Mr. Matthew, you know, sitting down, talking to him and learning the back office, learning the operational part of your back office. Um, what you have to do is know how to tell that story about your business, know how to be able to project what you plan to make within a week a month, a year, two years, five years down the line. So everything aligns with itself. If, if you can tell the, your, your um, business story through finance, through the finance aspect, <clears throat> it's easier for you to be able to receive a grant versus you not know. And you say, okay, right now I'm making 10,000 and you project to make 100,000. How? You have to be realistic. Like that's not a real goal. Unless you got something big and major that people need, which still not going to happen, you know, and people expect to make it right away, but there's steps to this. And I had to learn that. And I'd rather take the step, the, the, the small baby steps versus trying to find an easy outlet. Um, these adversities has taught me and propelled me, you know, for me to be now able to receive these grants. I've been awarded, uh, you know, quite a few times and I'm grateful. Now it's trying to master the pitch aspect. And with the RFCs, um, RPFs or whatever have you, um, I'm still working on that. It's kind of hard um, for the beauty industry, especially in Miami-Dade County. They tell you that it's hard um, because they don't you know, supply beauty stuff products. But there's other areas, like you mentioned, the prisons, um, you got the federal and stuff. So I'm still doing, working that back in to master and learn how to do that. So eventually you'll see me, you know, in the federal prisons because there's women coming out of prison or, you know, the funeral home, somebody dying, they need their hair service or whatever have you. So I'll be able to provide that as well as the hospitals, um, you know, or the nursing homes and stuff of that nature. I want to even be able to go to the schools. They tell me, you know, to work with cosmetology, but it is not just that because kids get bullied every day and they need an outlet where they learn about etiquette, you know, how to take care of themselves, how to dress up for interviews and stuff of that nature. So it's a lot that I plan to do in 2024. Oh, no, that's awesome. And you say, you know, there's levels and there's stages to these wages, as E-40 would say. So <laughs> you, you got to, you know, every step and, and the government contracting, you know, like I say, they buy everything from pencils to toilet paper and everything in between. But also they try to cut your price, too. And so that's the, the other piece. You got to make sure you give them the product that you can afford to give them without, you know, jeopardizing the rest of your business. Because they yeah. tell us, get the cert certifications, get the GSA right. schedule. But GSA wants you to really cut your price. And you're like, whoa, you got to have almost two sets of books and that ain't legal. So, you know, it's 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 crazy um, how that works. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about, you know, you talk about giving back, let's just get right into it. It's one of my signature questions. Um, what is the community give back that you 
uh, are doing or that you would like to do? Because you can do a back to school program, I'm thinking, anytime you want. And that's one heck of a commitment. I've done it. It's a blessing, but it is a commitment in that, that, that traffic trying to get there every day. So talk about any community give backs that you're doing or that you'd like to do in more detail, please. So what I've done, I've partnered up with other organizations or churches where I've done back to school backpack drives where we give backpacks or um, I've done it myself with my clients where I would tell them, you know, you provide book bags of such and such and you get such and such off um, your service. But um, I'm, I have also done their hair for back to school, making them look good, you know, no charge. Um, and the goal in the future is to be able to do that, you know, um, with my organization one day, you know, having a nonprofit where I can be able to give back um, freely and be grateful about the situation. How? I don't know, but God knows how. Um, but like I said, partnership with different um, organizations, different businesses um, within the community, you know, to make it happen. Let's go into, you know, the beauty business is one of those businesses where I remember Graham, like, while I'm laughing, I lived in like the, if we can call it the village, the city of Grambling, it's a small country town, but okay. you could have a barbershop open up and then right next door or two doors down, the barbershop will open up and it, you know, the beauty business becomes very um, competitive. A, a, competitive and everybody just sprout. Then you got the person in the bathroom saying, hey, I can make wigs too, you know, next door <laughs> to the, the building. Um, what is, is there any benefit of beauty businesses coming together and saying, you know what, we're going to take three of us, five of us, and we're going to get like an Emporium Mall type setting. We're going to blow this thing out. Is that possible or in our community, especially, do people really just want the freedom of doing their own thing and don't want to have to deal with people? Most people, and I'll speak for myself, um, I never look at people as competition or things as competition. Like I said, I was in a commercial building and there was numerous of hairstylists, numerous of barbers. And I was the type, instead of looking at them as competition, I would actually approach, especially the vets, and say, hey, what it is that you're working on today? Or can you teach me how to do something that I don't know how to do that I see that they're you know very good at? So for me, it, it's a learning experience working with other people, but not everybody know how to work together. Most people rather do it on their own instead of building a team, an empire, where there's a diverse of people working in a community. But that's the problem with our Black people. We don't know how to work together. Instead, we want to see someone doing something and say, you know what, I'm going to go do the same thing, but I might charge a lesser price. Why not say let's collab together and let's build a team and make it work and then, you know, have multiple locations. Is that a thing? Do you think it's too, because, uh, you know, South Florida is, we're so blessed here. The rest of the country is not like this where you have a everybody. I'm from Cali. I grew up with everybody, but there's like real communities. There's a Haitian restaurant, a Jamaican restaurant, African restaurant, um, you know, in wherever you live, you can probably find one um, in South Florida. But is it a, a cultural thing? Because I've also seen like, you know, Jamaican versus Jamaican or Jamaican versus Haitian or people ask you, what are you? That's the first thing they ask. And you're like, man, I'm me. I'm an alien. Uh, what, what do you what do you want? It, I mean, are, do you see any cultures being able to do that more than others here in South Florida? Because like, you know, everybody has a, a, a saw, you know what a saw is, you know, mm. or a John Gee for those of you. And there's 10 other words for it in communities where everybody's doing their group savings together. So we can get along on that. But on the business side, but do Haitians have um are Jamaicans anybody doing doing it that you see in our community? Because maybe it's just a it's a it's a cultural issue. Um, I always try to think. It's a cultural issue, um, but in the Southwest area, because that's where I'm located. Like what I like about the younger generation, they partner up with one another. Like they'll support one another. Um, I see the Cubans; they partner up with one another. 
they they you can just come in and instead of looking at that person as a competition, they find ways to help that person grow. Um, I even seen that growing up. You know, I I know what it is to build a community because I watch my parents do it. Mind you, we're in a two bedroom apartment. My parents will allow other people and their family to come stay. We would give up our room, my sister and I, and be in our parents' room to make sure. So I know what it is to build a team or to grow or to help someone else grow. But a lot of people don't get that because they didn't receive that from home. And it starts at home, you know, um, you know, networking, growing together or whatever have you. A lot of people are not able to do that. They'll rather look at someone as a competition. You never know just you helping someone, how that will benefit and bless you in a multitude way. Amen. And I, I don't understand uh, when people say they did not have family members who are at the house. Uh, and I don't understand when people say, oh, no, I didn't grow up in church. I'm like, huh? I thought everybody did. I, you know, whether you yeah, were acting yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. Some people everybody didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So um, and, and not to say that that's, you know, there's nothing wrong. You just grew up different um, because some folks, some of y'all were raising in hell in church, um, all type of stuff. But um, what was going on? It was like the club. That's why I liked it. Um, but no can way. you talk? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just, you know, <laughs> it was always a story. Can you talk about um you know, your plans as expansion. And do you have any plans even to maybe get like, uh, I have my barber, when I do get my hair cut from a professional, usually I let my daughter do it. Um, do, you know, mobile barbers. I love my mobile barber. You know, we talk about collaboration, but if you got to come to me, I'm like, forget that collab or y'all collab, whatever. But he came in with this beautiful thing. He said he bought for $10,000, reframed it. I, one of my neighbors has one. Any plans on expansion for mobile bar, mobile beauty shop or, you know, even a bigger shop or shops all over, you know, the state, country, the world, maybe? That That is the goal. I do want to go international as well. And that's with the wigs. But as far as um, within the United States, yes, I definitely want to be able to expand, have multiple locations. That's always been my vision and my goal. My That's one thing my dad would say. You want to be a doctor, get your own clinic. You want to be a hairstylist, get your own salon. Like that was always instilled in my, um, within me and my sister. And so I don't know the plans God have for me, but I'm, that's what I'm looking for, to have a staff, to have a team you know, where I can take vacations and the vacations is not just for me to like have uh, self-care, but to also empower other women, um, go to different temples and, and learn about the hair, learn about wig making, teaching others how to make wigs. You know, it's, it's going to be a community. I just got to think of the name though. And you know what I'm going to have the community doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what they say, write the vision down and, and make faith it plain. without works and make yes, it plain sir. and faith without works. And it just, it just happens to come out like that. Like when you just work at something and you just keep working, you, keep working. something happens. It, it, yeah. So it's a, it's a beautiful, a beautiful thing. Now with the wigs, how can somebody order them if they aren't in Florida, if they aren't near you and give them a range? Because your wigs don't look like some of the helmets that we see some people <laughs> wear. And I'm talking about y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Not a helmet. Wow. That's a new one. I need to use that. Um, so the wigs start off at 350 and that's just for me to make it. So basically I customize it. Um specifically for the preference of that client's head. So I take your measurements and then from the measurements, we go into details as far as the texture you're looking for, the length, the style, and then the wig is made. I tend to tell people it takes uh, seven to 10 business days, you know, just in case, you know, something happens. Um, but it takes like three hours to actually do. Um, and it all depends on the color, the length, and stuff so the prices do vary um there's no set price most people look for a set price but i am working on creating a set price from small medium and long 
Okay. And you and the price is, you know, I say that's reasonable because I see folks always trying to um compete with the celebrities. And of course, celebrities cap all day and talk about what they're spending. And then people say, Oh, I gotta have that. So you got a whole car payment um for you know a few months on your head, but you're not Beyonce doing 50 shows. So, you know, um, does do wigs really cost, you know, it does. What, I'm gonna be honest with you. Mm -hmm. 350 is just for me to make it. Now, if we're including the hair, the cost of the hair do factor into the price. So it'll start off anywhere between 700 and up, depending. And I've looked at competitors and stuff from local and online. You have some people starting at 1500 for the cost of the wigs. Okay. That's, uh, that, and that's, yeah. And yeah, that's... Yeah. And the thing is, people don't realize you can take it off. You can put it back on. You don't want to wear that one. Like my client says, like wearing shoes. Not every hairstyle is going to go with the outfit you're wearing. So you get to switch up your looks. You know, to th this morning, you might see me in a bob. And later on, you might see me in some curly hair. You know, that that's the good thing. And it's the quality of the hair. Um, HD lace. That's the best lace to have because it looks so natural and flawless. You can't even tell that you're wearing a wig. I have people all the time be like, it's a wig, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, I did it. Nice. Yeah. Now, here's a technical question. Uh, we're going into Web3, um, you know, going into whatever metaverse dimension Twilight Zone. But when mm -hmm. I think of AI right. and what is your thoughts on will AI um, or even 3D printing have a big impact on how you create wigs. Cause if you could just put it in a machine and it was a for, you know, whatever affordable is, everyone's budget is different, but that you could maybe even, you know, start cloning the wig and like the Chinese cloning the wig process. So I know it's still not easy for us to control the hair industry because it's done all abroad. But if we could clone our 3D print the same type of hair, then have the machine make it. How far off do you think we are from that? I just came from Art Basel and saw all the robots doing right. drawings and everything. So that's where my mind is. Give us the game. That, that's what I'm trying to see because, you know, right now everything is going technology wise and I'm trying to figure it out myself besides just creating an app where Women can try on from the comfort of their own home, but how can I be a part of the technical world, the technology, technological world um, of making wigs? So I'm still trying to figure that out myself. But maybe I, I highly doubt that we'll have something like that because you need the humans for the wig making. But you never know because China always up something. Yeah. Technology is doing what it does. And I would um, suggest to you and anybody who's experiencing this that check out events like CES in Vegas happens once a year in Vegas, also happens in Asia um, and maybe somewhere in Europe. But it's the Consumer Electronics Show and it is the best, biggest, uh, you know, electronic technical show that you can go to in this country because the things that they're doing are just awesome i mean they're trying to replace us on everything i'm talking they everything they're trying they to replace husbands and wives they have gadgets there and you're like whoa what is going on so we're not, we're you know not going in yeah we, we 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 hope not we we, we hope For, not trust me, we're, we, they can try we're not Remember um, the Jetsons? Mm -hmm. I used to watch that and um, I used to always say, oh my gosh, it's going to be us in the future. But no matter how they try to get robots, they're going to crash. They're not going to last long. Um, I don't remember what movie it was, but it was like a bunch of different robots. And then one day you woke up, everything was just like flatlined. There, there was nothing working because everything crashed. I mean, there, there's no way they're gonna need us. Regardless, you talking about the, you talking about the new movie uh, that Obama produced that they're no, trying, they're calling Obama. Okay, 
before Obama's time. Like I used to watch these um, sci-fi movies and stuff of that nature. I robot, you know, they can try. Mm -hmm. Humans are not going nowhere. You don't be afraid about your jobs being replaced. Um, it all depends on the type of job. But when it comes to service businesses, we're not going nowhere. We're here to stay. We're here to stay for years to come. I'm ready for the jets in time. And it's only because I've seen on I've seen on TikTok people mm -hmm. say, I need more. I saw some surfer dude. We need more PPP money, like ten thousand dollars a month, so we can just hang out on the beach before the robots replace us. And when he was serious in like a city council type meeting. And I'm thinking George Jetson, you know what his hardest day or part of the day was when he pushed that button and then he would get tired and stretch out and having to hear from M Mr. Spacely, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the young people have told me clearly, I don't want to work. They right. don't want to work. They, not, they that they don't, yeah. not that they don't, not that they don't want to do like their dream job. No, I just don't want to work. Period. So it was microwave. They want it fast. They want it now. And they talking about their money and, and and their fun. But it's you know, Miss George Jefferson's job would be a burden to them. Where if you've ever had like a real job, y'all, I've had many of them been replaced for many of them. That's why I had to be an entrepreneur because my clients love me. Um, I, I make them money. But it's it's when you get into that mentality of nobody wants to work in this country because the whole world isn't like this. There's people who want to work other places. Where do you think we're going when we have a class that don't want to work and then want to blame immigrants, which I've told people publicly, if immigrants ever leave in America in the droves, you see those flags, y'all? Catch me in one of those countries. I'm out of here. So where, where, where do you see... We're in trouble. No, honestly, you're absolutely right. Because I feel like the immigrants come here and they're ready to work. And our own people would rather, you know, depend on the government or, like you said, not work. But you you need the work. You need even if you're not going to work for someone, you need to work for yourself. You know, but you just need to figure out what is it that someone needs on a day to day basis. Whether the economy slows down, we have another crash. You know, another pandemic. What is going to still generate when we're home? And that's where the mm -hmm. technology part that you was talking about comes in at. How can I make some money even though there's a shutdown? Yeah, that robot may come into place. But for now, I'll be using an industrial sewing machine that can help me speed and reduce my cost time. Got you, got you. <sighs> so... Not to add more things to your to-do list, because I know it's it's full, but have you started your book? I know you have a YouTube. You, you need some love. You, you've been, it you does. haven't seen it. You haven't seen it in a few years, it looked like. But any <laughs> plans for a book, podcast, or to relaunch the YouTube? I definitely want to start a podcast uh, where it's not just about hair. It's about like relationship, um, God, business, anything, you know. Yes, I definitely want to start a podcast, a, a blog um, channel as well. Yeah, 2024 is right around the corner. There was a program that I took, which I encourage every entrepreneur or someone who's, who wants to start a business called How to Start Something. It was a nine months program intense but very well worth it um her name is pam hosel um she connected with uh, jp morgan chase um she's the owner and founder of dear rockstar entrepreneur ready and this program helps you understand the front the back the side up and down of your business she gives you the blueprint breakdown um understanding your core value aligning your um sweet spot with your venture what's your why what, what's the reason why you started is this really for you having curiosity conversations like i can be shy people don't believe me but i might get in an environment with a bunch of people and i might get you know um intimidated or where i probably lack confidence like my sister would say she I, you just lack confidence um and i might not speak and that's like i said i met 
uh, Mr. Matthew back in 2017. And because of that, when that shyness comes, a little turtle goes in the shell, um, I wound up not speaking to people. And what I loved about the program, it helped me to open up. And having these curiosity conversations is not just about knowing yourself, but also having conversations with people within your business or outside of your business. But it helps you develop and grow. That was the best thing I could have done. Um, and we just completed it. Um, Monday was our graduation day. And I was grateful for the opportunity. So if you want to join, um, it's entrepreneurready.com. I can share it with you so you can uh, share the link with you so you can share it to your audience. But definitely, definitely great. On top of that, there was like a bonus that we wasn't aware of till the end where you also receive $1,000. But of course, it was only 50 recipients who, who would win the $50,000. And they did a live drawing. I was number one. I was shocked. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, I was grateful. My sister also um, won, you know, a thousand dollars as well as other members. But it's a great, 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 great investment, and it's free. So why not? Nine months, yeah. intense, step by step, seven phases of breakdown. How to, you know, launch or relaunch your business. That is that what a, a reward at the end. Um, that's a right. that's a blessing. Can you tell the people people here? Okay, you got the money. Do you have to spend it on your business, or can I go buy my Maserati or put the down payment on my Ashton Martin? Like when you get when you get rewarded like that, what do you do with those funds? For me, I can't speak for others because, I mean, it's not a grant towards your business, but you can pretty much do whatever because it was like Merry Christmas. But for me, it's all about investing into the business to make more money, being strategic. What am I going to do to flip it and make more money like the dope boys do when they, you know, when they get their work and then they flip it to make more. So you got to figure out in your business, you get a grant, you get rewarded. That's the reason why they have projections in place. How do you plan on scaling this business to the next level? And you have to figure it out. That's where your business plans come in place. You know, every um, so often, periodically, you should be checking your business plan. You should be updating it and seeing where it will take you. And you never know um, who you will come across that can help you get to that next level. So it's important to go to networking events, but it all depends on which ones you go to because not all is for you. Uh, yeah, amen, amen. And you say, when you said that, you allow me now to open up, talking about some of those um, alternative lifestyles when you're talking about flipping and you got the Nino Brown uh chain and shirt on from new jack city right yeah i'm not the only one who caught that but you again you around the way girl you know bamboo earrings at least two pair your podcast and the stories you hear dealing with women and their relationships you could really i mean come out the gate right now with what's being said on youtube and relationship wise but you have to sometimes go into the mud because people want to hear the mess um, there's the, how, how will you balance that out before you start? I want to know how will you balance that out? Because if you go just for the views, it's easy, but if, you know, people get confused in the views and they, they miss the message sometimes. So where are you seeing it going? Cause you know, YouTube is, um, you've already done it. You, you've had some, you know, some traction, but where you see yourself going with this podcast, Slash YouTube. It's all the same thing to me. I want to talk about everything. I want to be natural. I don't want to pretend because I'm not the type of person to pretend. What you see is what you get. I, I don't know how to be phony, you know, or, you know, like I said, be fake. It, I'd rather be real straightforward. And that's what you're going to get. Realness. It might be me and my sister one day. You're going to see the real us. Like we have our debates and stuff of that nature. You, you, you got to be honest with with people, people relate to honesty. And if you're not being honest, they're going to say, oh, you know, she's temporary. She's just an episode. Um, I don't want to see her next season. So as long as you stay real and honest, people respect that and they love you for that. And they come back like my client's prime example. You know, 
I could be a little rough around the edges with them, but they come back because they know at the end of the day, I'm being real, I'm being sincere, and I want the best for them. I, it's like tough love. You know how you get it from your parents, but I'm not going to be getting the belt for you, you know? But it's, it's discipline, but it's also fun, excitement. You just got to be real with people. Real, recognize, real. Gotcha. And some folks say, I bring the belt. I mean, it's not that type of service. You know, some folks want that Ike and Tina, that Ike and Tina relationship, um, 50 shades, but no, it's, it's, it's a lot. Let the people know where they can find you, where they can book some time, where they can find out what you're going to do in the future and any last words, especially for that entrepreneur who might be 14 in her room right now, practicing her wig skill, you know, whether it's hand or on the machine, give, give them the game. Listen, if you're 14, if you any age, to be honest, number one, if you have people around you, you're doing their hair. Because I remember when I was in school, I would tell my friends, if you're my friend, like you say you are, then you will support me. This is my business. And they used to pay. Their parents would ask me how much was the service. My mom would say, you expensive, but my clients paid me. So make sure that you're not doing services for free. Now, if you're learning, yeah, you might have one or two people that you practice on. Once you master that craft, you start to charge. Now, the next thing you want to do is save your money. I was spending my money. I was buying clothes. I was, you know, going out, you know, spending money on food. I learned. But for you, you save your money and invest it into your venture, that goal. God places things in us for a reason. You keep having that same vision over and over because that's God telling you it will happen. How will it happen? I don't know. You just got to figure it out along the way. You're going to make mistakes. Mistakes are meant to happen. That's how you grow. That's how you learn from them. And then you teach someone else. You implement what you learned from it because there's a lesson in it. You just got to figure out how you overcome the situation. You can find me on... Go ahead. What? You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Threaded by Lavish. Instagram and Facebook, Lavish Touches Hair. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Threaded by Lavish. TikTok, Lavish Touches Hair. Um, YouTube, Lavish Threaded by Lavish Touches Hair. Um, what else? I think that's it. And if you want to book me, um, you can find me on Acuity. Um, H T P P S threaded by lavish um, dot as me as dot me. Okay. And I, I will have links. I will have links in the description because some of you guys will say threaded. How do I spell that? And we, I'm right. not, you know, for, for, for don't worry about it. Links in the description wherever you're experiencing this. I know most of you are on. Apple or Podbean, I'm told, but feel free to check out the YouTube. Feel free to like it, subscribe, and share this game with somebody. It will change their life. And also, people, I want you to know that the book has been released. So don't ask me for a book. Go to Amazon, go to Barnes and Nobles, go to your library, request a book if you don't have the money. But the London and Sydney Explore the World book is out, 144 pages of pure art history about Cameroon. Learn about where your roots might come from. Learn about Africa, period. Even if you aren't an African or you're not Black, it doesn't matter. The book is for everybody. And I'll tell you later what the children's book Council has told me about the next steps for our series, but make sure you go get that. I'm more than just a podcast host and a consultant and a sports agent. I like writing books. So check it out, y'all. Make sure you subscribe. Peace. Maybe you Be can blessed. teach me. Oh, to what? To do a book? Write a 